Hey guys, what up? It's I Destiny. Welcome back. And this is the Indigenous Beach Culture Film Festival here in Lamar Park. And I'm so Destiny, welcome back, and this is the Indigenous Beach Culture Film Festival here in Lamar Park, and I'm so excited to have Sharon Shaper with me today, surfer, poet, musician, artist, extraordinaire, and so I just really wanted to kind of pick her brain a little bit on just being a person of color, being a, especially a woman in this culture uh, that is the beach culture that we talk about today. I feel like a lot of times there's kind of parameters on, you know, who can be a part of these kinds of cultures. So I just feel like you're kind of this tastemaker doing your own thing. So tell me a little bit about that. You being a tastemaker in the industry, you know, kind of creating this a space for, for women of color. <laughs> I don't know if I'm a tastemaker, but, um, well, you know, what I'm trying to do is just create a platform for for people of color, women, to get out there and feel like they have a place in the water, they have a place to be seen, um, they have a place to express themselves. You know, I'm really trying to uh, get us a seat at the table to lift up our representation and our presence there. Um, should I look at you? Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, just to lift up our presence in the water and and have us have a seat at the table, have good representation, have good sponsorship, just lifting people up. So that's what I'm trying to really, you know, set an example of us not just being taking pretty pictures of us and all like that, but just giving us the tools and the equipment and the exposure that we need to kind of really uh, you know, be a, a tangible part of the surf industry. So that's what I'm trying to do in terms of in terms of that. No, I love that because I know for me, being a young black girl going out to the beach, I always felt very self-conscious, not just even surfing because, you know, the majority of the surfs out there were white, but just even being a girl and there's, you know, tons and dozens and dozens of guys out there and just feeling that kind of sense of being self-conscious and just not even wanting to get out there because of that, you know, stopping and coming back to surfing later on. So did you kind of experience something like that or from the time you started surfing, you were like, I'm doing this regardless of... I always paddled out like I own the dang place, yes. you know, I always paddled <laughs> Out with a smile. I always make my presence known. Like I'm here. I'm gonna get waves, but you're gonna get waves too. I like to help anybody. I'll help white guys too. It doesn't matter to me. If I see someone needing help, then I then I give them that help. So for me, I would like to take the narrative off of experiencing all this negativity or toxicity in the water. I don't necessarily think it's there in large numbers. And what little bit of it is there, I think if you bring love and joy to the water, because Mother Ocean is just there to love us and to support us and nurture us and just caress us and I just think that we are spokespersons of love we are spokespersons for the earth we are spokespersons for the planet and that's how we're going to heal all of this mess all of this nonsense is healed by our sense of bringing love joy and unity to the water and for me that's my theme that's what I'm really trying to be about like you know so yeah I think I hope that answers the question yeah no, that was beautiful yeah. And I love how you kind of, you gave, I mean, you're a poet, so it's like, I felt like the way that you said it was like poetry, like, you know, you're bringing yourself to the beach, you're bringing, you know, your positive, you know, aspirations and mindsets and everything to the beach. So, I mean, that being said, what are you looking for as far as these films? Do you want, you know, somebody who's just giving an amazing, you know, storyline of just how they interact with the beach, how they feel about, you know, the waves and their connection to the water? Or are you looking for, you know, just amazing visuals and just a feeling of, you know, a storyline? Like, what are you looking for in the film festival that will, well, that will resonate with you? Well, all, for me, all of it resonates with me. I mean, I can't really pick and choose because a beautiful expression of art is a beautiful expression of art. Right. So for me, I'm going to embrace that. If someone puts their love into a project, into a piece of art, then I feel like 
I mean, it's all good to me. I mean, I don't, I don't think one is better or stronger or greater than the other. It's just, um, it, again, it's just that sense of creating your vision and then the people that are brave enough to make a film and to put their whole heart and soul into film and cut it together and edit it into something. Like, I bow down to all of those people, you know, because to me that's incredible, you know. I just go out there myself. Uh, like I say, I just... I just got a reputation early on because I knew that no one was going to give me anything. No one was going to give me away. So I, again, brought love and joy to the water. I just bring a big laugh, I'm loud. I call people off if it's if it's my wave, you know, and it's not their wave. I'll let them know. Hey, no, no, no. This black girl is going on that wave. You think she's not, but I got news for you. She is. So those are the kind of things where I feel like, ooh, you got to really use your voice in this world to be heard and to be recognized and to make that change that we're really trying to make. We have to use our voices. So if anything, I would see, you know, some people of color are, you know, backed up and they're very quiet and they're very kind of yes. removed. And for me, I just would wish that I could just inject them all with just, you know. Just do it. Just do it. <laughs> just pride, just loud, just joy. Because to me, that's what surfing is. Surfing is love. Surfing is joy. Surfing is unity, you know. So that's, that's really what it is to me. Uh, what an amazing setup you did today. You were amazing and awesome. You brought your team out here with your beautiful board. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Your beautiful board out here and generational health. Thank you. Can you tell me a little bit more about it? Or should I wait till after your massage session? You can, you can do now. That's fine. Um, tell me more about generational health. So generational health is a concierge health and wellness nonprofit. That is designed to bring more opportunities and resources to underserved communities in the Los Angeles area. So today we were focusing on self care. So along with self care, we want to do nutrition consulting. We want to do reintroduction to foods. We want to help people learn how to build their own gardens. Um, and then even co-parenting classes so you can build a, a friendlier environment for your child. So that's wow. what generational health is. It's beautiful. And you're a surfer. How long have you been surfing? About a year and a half now. You got an awesome board. That, that was a gift. That was a gift. I am really jealous. That was a gift. That is someone, amazing Someone board. found that and, and cleaned it up and gave it to me and it was in good shape. That, that is an kid. amazing board. That was a calling. Yeah. When you get a board like that, and it, and it, you can tell is it easily a six. And this man right here, everybody's been waiting for him. Wow. I'm gonna make sure I get over this here before y'all pack up. Sean the massage guy. I'm before y'all pack up. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna make sure I get in here too. Please do. Oh my god. to seeing in these films? Are you looking forward to seeing some amazing surfing? Are you looking for brilliant stories? Um, to be honest, whenever I watch surf films, I, I like to see, you know, the big barrels getting ridden. A lot of big A lot of big waves, you know, stories are great, don't get me wrong. Like, if you have an amazing story, that, that's beautiful too. So, everyone's looking at me but not smiling or talking to me. And it just made me question, like, why are they looking at me then? They don't want to be my friend. Are they looking at me because I'm a woman? Are they looking at me because I'm black? Are they looking at me because I suck? And like, I'm not supposed to be there if I suck. That's isolating. Too. But uh, to be honest, whenever I look at surf films, I, I'm always looking at the waves. The waves Where it's at, you know, like, and 
what they're doing on the waves too. Welcome back, and we're here at the Indigenous Beach Culture Film Festival here in Lamert Park. And I've got one of the servers here, Kai. What's up? How are you? I'm good. How are you? So good. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your surf journey, because I mean, you were showing me some videos, you were showing me some some photos on you just doing some crazy stuff, you know, being upside down on the surfboard. So tell us a little bit about how you started. Let's see how I started. I started. Uh, from my cousins to my older brother Kimo, he's also another Hawaiian, Filipino, and black, like myself. Um, they made me surf. I didn't have a choice when I was younger. You know, being the younger brother and the younger cousin and the nephew, you know how it goes. They, uh, they force you to get in the water. I hit my head one time, almost drowned. Thought I was gonna die. They said, we don't care, get back out in the water. And uh, the rest is history from there. Okay, so where did you grow up? Did you grow up at the beach? Did your family always travel to the beach? Kind of tell us a little bit about that. Well, and I, where, what areas do you like to surf? Well, I grew up uh, I grew up surfing in Ventura, in Ventura County. We grew up in a little town called Ojai. So uh, we would always go with our cousin, you know, before I was old enough to drive, we would always go down and uh, we would always ditch school and you know, go to the beach, go surf. You know, it was a 10 minute drive down. Bad you know. kids, the bad kids. Yeah, we're, we're them, we're them. But, uh, you know, eventually, you know, got our, our license, kept ditching school, and then kept going to the beach. And then, uh, as far as surfing places, I've surfed all over the world. So I've surfed um, Central America. I competed down in Nicaragua. Um, my surfboard sponsor, my former surfboard sponsor, Pearl Surfboards, uh, John Burgess Designs, they flew me down there. I competed in their national contest down there. Uh, I've surfed in Japan. I've surfed in Indonesia, Hawaii. Um, you have to go to Hawaii. You have to. Oh, yeah, you yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful. And um, Costa Rica, you know, all up and down California. So out of all those places, which is your favorite? And you can have favorites in different categories, like, oh, I like this because of, you know, whatever. So just tell me a little bit, give me your top three, top three favorite surf places. I would say, waves-wise, um, Hawaii. Hawaii and Indonesia, just because I love tropical water. Like, if you like- Warm water. Yeah, if you like warm water and like crystal clear pool water, you'll want to go to a tropical spot. Um, as far as crowds, um, Tanegashima in Japan, I surf there. That's like one of the southern islands. Um, and Central America. The only problem with Central America, though, is you got the locals. They don't like Americans. Doesn't matter what color you are, I've learned. Um, but I befriended them. No, no, they're cool now, they're cool now. But, <laughs> but the majority of them, don't, they don't like Americans. But, uh, it's really dangerous down there. There's a lot of crocodiles and alligators and stuff you gotta watch oh, out for. Snap. Hey, my name is Su Yen. Uh, we're in Costa Rica and I've been here since March. We're now going on October and I stayed here long because of the surfing. And also I, I started a business called Black Boosh. Boosh. We make uh, all organic, all local, natural handmade products. Um, and also organic kombucha. To surf down there, there's actually a hurricane off the coast and I almost died four times in one session. So, it was fun. Yeah, risk it all. It was so, fun. Hey, it was big. Oh, I feel you. Well, hopefully we're, we <laughs> see some of those amazing things as well. But thank you so much, Kai. And we'll see you guys at the film festival. Is tell me what the
Destiny, welcome back. And this is the Indigenous Beach Culture Film Festival here in Lamar Park, and I'm here with the Coral Doctor. I'm super excited to talk to her today. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. So I'm sure the question on everybody's mind, and I know you probably get this a lot, but why coral? What about coral? And I mean, yeah, just what about coral? Why did you pick it? <laughs> well, growing up, I've always kept aquariums. Um, you know, I've always had like freshwater aquariums, saltwater aquariums, and when I would go diving on vacations, I always felt like the reefs were magical. So when I found out that you could have corals in your saltwater aquariums, I decided to pick down, up on that and have them. That's interesting. So did you grow up at the beach or was it just something your family always did kind of like on travels and things like that? Well, I'm originally from San Diego So we were always at the beach because that was like the only thing we really had to do But being in LA, I've been at the beach pretty often um, I do enjoy traveling and when I do travel I tend to go to beach like places. So it's just it's just a habit Okay, and I'm sure you found kind of a lot of people that are very like-minded like you that are trying to save the coral reefs I know it's a huge thing in Australia um, so kind of what communities have you found here that are really kind of on the same page with you as far as uh, trying to conserve the, the coral reefs and taking care of kind of marine li uh, life? Um, just tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so there's actually um, a major aquarium hobby that I didn't even know existed until I got on social media with like a lot of my projects. And um, while working within the hobby, I did have some concerns about, okay, how are we helping the ocean if we're taking for the ocean to have these fish and corals in our own homes? But then I realized like, well, we can grow coral. People do it all the time. There's vendors that literally sell millions of pieces of corals a year. And so if we can grow this for our own recreation purposes we should be able to do this from like a conservation standpoint so um, basically once I started working with different conservationists I was able to open up many doors within the hobby and invite a lot of people on my journey so I actually have a project that I'm in that works right now where I'm working internationally to discuss the future of saving our oceans by having conservationists and aquarium hobbyists come together cool now I saw that you're also in the process of getting your law degree. How does that kind of factor into, you know, your, your lifestyle being a coral... Co <laughs> How do you say it? Con conservationist. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I actually graduated this past May 2020. I just uh -oh. sat for the October bar exam, so I'm awaiting my bar results. But, um, you know, my law school, we didn't have a class specifically for ocean conservation law and policy, but I did decide to self-study that on my own while I was in law school. So for the last few years, I have focused on um, pretty much the area of ocean law and how different locations have different jurisdictions and how we can create policy change and really how it's done like from the legal standpoint so I do intend to use my legal education once I get my bar license to further my goals with creating stronger restrictions and policy changes for what we import and export and what we sell and how we sell it cool. now last question for you where can people go to kind of find more about how they can help the coral reefs or get involved in a program maybe something that you're doing specifically or just other kind of communities just in general that are really trying to help save you know the ocean and the coral reefs and really take care of the environment that we have here um, well you can definitely find me on social media my username is the coral doctor and on my page I just work with a lot of separate groups um, I work with a lot of scientists that are individuals along with a lot of companies that are working with whether it's uh, plastic free uh, products to help with the pollution aspect of saving our oceans or also just other forms of um, environmental scientists and environmentalists who are out there doing their part as well whether it's with climate change or global um, or with pollution so basically as far as like a specific group I don't particularly have one I work with I would say at this point maybe 20 30 people right now so I'm more than happy to continue to share their work on my page if anyone is interested in learning more all right thank you Milan hopefully you enjoy the festival and uh, the rest of the festivities we have here for you today thanks
inspiration for your piece came from? The inspiration of my piece came from, um, inspiration of my piece. A reflection in the mirror. I got into skating through a lot of boredom. Um, like I said, everyone was getting into basketball, soccer. Um, I think those are the main ones, which are fun, but I don't like losing and everyone takes it differently. Some people are just there to have fun. Some people are there to be world champion. Some people are there just to be there. And I always wanted to win, so. Hey guys, what up? It's iDestiny. Welcome back. And we're here at Emerald with me, skater, surfer, as well as contributor to this film festival. So, the first thing I'm going to ask you is tell me where the inspiration for your piece came from. The inspiration of my piece came from. Ah! The inspiration of my piece came from looking at myself in the mirror and asking, who am I? And then looking at all the footage that I have and saying, this is who I am. And then cutting it all together with a good friend and then producing it and giving it to you. <laughs> okay. So I like how he was kind of vague about it because I kind of pick it apart a little bit and ask. Yes. You know, some, some deep questions. So when you say when you were looking at yourself, you mean as far as yourself within the, uh, the beach and indigenous culture of surfing and skating or just you as a person in general and how that kind of applies to or adds into being part of the culture? Uh, I feel as an individual. Who am I as an individual? When I wake up, what's the first and last thing I think about? And what gets me on through the day? So, I mean, obviously being a POC or a black person in the kind of beach indigenous culture of surfing and skating, there's kind of a lot of barriers just even trying to get into it. Um, you know, obviously a lot of the gatekeepers are, you know, white people. And for us, it takes kind of a little bit to assimilate. So what would you say, like, was that difficult for you? What, did you start off surfing first or skating first? And what were those cultures like to kind of uh, assimilate into? I definitely started off skateboarding first. Um, the skateboarding culture was kind of cool um if anything it was like personal fear like failing in front of people so i actually started skating in my kitchen and like within doors yeah and then surfing i got into many years later due to like injury and boredom and hot summer days but the biggest difference between that is that you can't hide in the kitchen and try to skate or try to surf you have to put yourself out there on the line on the line but in the line of people's eyesight where they see you fail so I think it built character like I still surf now and there's a lot of things that don't really phase me nowadays which I think are mainly because of those mornings going out and not having a clue of what I was doing and failing at it but still having a fire for it so it's helped me in multiple ways as a human and um, definitely started skating first and then last question for you what do you hope people kind of take away from seeing your piece um, to get back in the gym, like these muscles don't come easily. No, I'm playing. Um, I, I like haven't seen it yet, so I'm, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. <laughs> uh, get out there, be you, do what you love. That's pretty much it, just do what you love. And that's something that I love, skating and surfing. Um, there is no message, just be you, do what you love. Hey, that's a message in itself. Yes. All right, well thank you, Emerald. Thank you so much. I do something with my life. Every day we do this, every day we're on this wall. And I just remember seeing some guy just skating down the street. And everything was in slow motion. I'll never forget that. He was just skating, just cruising, having the time of his life. And legit at that point on, fifth grade, fourth grade, McKinley Elementary, on timeout, on like a Tuesday, I'll never forget that day. That's what sparked my interest in skateboarding. I was a kid, just honestly skating all day. I can't even give a timestamp. Yes. To be here to see Black Surf. Woo! 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 Black Surf. Yes. Black body boarders. Yes. yes. Black skaters. Yes. 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 Woo! Yes. 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 This is our Hollywood. Oh. We are going to begin in a second.
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That's a 